Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 28th of August 2018 and the time has just gone 11.30 British Summer Time. Uh, well, the, the big news over the last couple of days has been uh, the strong session in the United States in the, on, the, on the Wall Street last night after the US and Mexico reached a trade, trade agreement. Uh, this really boosted uh, investment sentiment in the US. We saw the S&P 500 reach a new all-time high. The Nasdaq Composite also hit an all-time high. And the Dow Jones closed above 26,000. It was the first time the Dow closed north of 26,000 since early February this year. And it's also managed to lift sentiment uh, in, in Europe and in Asia as well, but to a lesser extent. Um, also, what's been in the news as well, the US dollar continues to be weak. Uh, at the back end of last week, we heard uh, several, several updates from central bankers at the Jackson Hole Symposium over in the, in the US. And I suppose the main one was from Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve. And Mr. Powell gave an, an upbeat view of the US economy, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, exceptionally hawkish. It was as hawkish as investors had expected. And given that the, the US dollar, say, at, at the beginning of last week or maybe, maybe two weeks ago, wasn't quite decent, was, was, um, was, it wasn't quite decent shape, traders use that as an excuse to kind of cash in their, their long positions on the US dollar and the, the dollar index has been weaker uh, ever since uh, Mr. Powell's update. But by and large, the US dollar in the grand scheme of things is still fairly strong and it is, uh, traders are expecting, uh, the majority of traders are expecting a rate hike from the, from the Federal Reserve uh, next month. Uh, and then uh, this, uh, and and even the the Bloomberg um, probability uh, interest rate probability is factoring in about a six percent probability of a rate hike for the Federal Reserve in December. So things are looking quite optimistic for the U.S. But just it just seems to me that the word at the Mr. Powell's update wasn't as hawkish as investors had hoped. So taking a look uh, at the week week ahead events, uh, the week ahead can be found. On our website, if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you will find the week ahead article. So looking ahead to tomorrow, Wednesday, we have second quarter uh, growth figures, GDP figures from the US. Uh, we have first half figures from Restaurant Group on Friday. Um, and also on Friday, we have first half figures from All Mutual. So as you can see, it's a fairly quiet week uh, in, in terms of actual updates th th this week. So moving on to uh, a few of the major markets. Uh, like I said, the European stock markets are getting out to a fairly decent start um, today. Uh, the FTSE was obviously closed yesterday as was bank holiday in the UK. So the, the FTSE seemed to have actually kind of played catch up uh, as continent Europe did had a, a fairly, broadly speaking, had a fairly positive session yesterday. As we can see here uh, from the FTSE 100, it's been largely range bound uh, for, for the last number of months. But uh, while it holds north of this red line here, the truth moving average, which comes into play at 7,419, while we remain north of that, uh, it's, it's likely that the outlook for the FTSE is going to remain positive. And we can see here in the past sessions, the market has been edging higher. It's at a level uh, not seen as high today, not, not seen since the middle of August. Uh, so it just, just goes to show, show you that there's a slight increase in positive sentiment. The market has managed to kind of move back above the 100 day moving average. And it's now look at this yellow line here. And it's heading towards the 50 day moving average, this, this blue line here. If you do manage to clear the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 7,000, 634. Next level to watch out for to the upside will be 7,700. And if we go beyond beyond that, trends will be looking up towards 7,794. It's only if I have a size for break south of this red line here, the trendy moving average, which comes into play just south of 7,500. It's only if I have a size for break south of that, could then actually potentially open 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 the pave the way for further losses. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany with the DAX. So, DAX, so the DAX has been in, a, in, a, in, in a, um, an upward trend for the last number of sessions, but, but still we haven't actually quite gotten back up as far as high as the trendy moving average. So while we remain south of this red line here, the trendy moving average, which comes into play at just, just north of 12,700, or actually apologize, at, yeah, just, 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 uh, just, just shy of 12,700, the outlook is likely to remain uh, um, to remain negative. But if you do manage to take to retake 12,700, the next area to keep an eye out for will be the mid-July high of um, 12,888. And if we go beyond that, big psychologically important 13,000 number will then come into play. Move to the downside in the DAX. May find some support from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play just north of 12,500. Um, keep it, and if you go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards 
the, this, this consolidation here in around the kind of 12,340, 12,330 region there. And if you go south of that, we'll be looking heading back down towards the, uh, the, the, the August low, which comes, into, which comes into play just north of 12,120. So as I mentioned, the S&P 500 uh, set a fresh all-time high last night. Take a look at the S&P 500 now. If the market is hitting an all-time high, that is a very that, that is a that tells you everything you need to know about how how, how bullish the market is. Uh, as you can see here, the market is pushing higher here, reaching all reaching an all-time high. If you look at the MACD indicator or the MACD histogram, we can see that, that the momentum in recent, recent sessions has swung from negative territory to positive territory. So the market is pushing higher. The rate of positive momentum is, is, is increasing, so the, the, the momentum is with the buyers, is with the bulls, so you can be more confident that the upward move is going to continue. If you do continue to push in higher from here, we'd be looking at, say, probably the next increments of 2,910, 20, so on and so forth. Any moves to the downside may find some support in around the 2,900 area, or perhaps back as low, uh, back down to towards the 2,877 area, which would be in the kind of out of hours high back in January. Take a look now at the Nasdaq 100. Similar situation here, whereby the Nasdaq 100 went down to close it, uh, have a record close last last night. And what we also saw is that the, the market here is looking towards, uh, is heading, is, is pointing for uh, another another uh, all-time high on the Nasdaq 100. So, getting an indication of, of how uh, positive sentiment is. Similar situation here, whereby the where, whereby the, where the on the MACD indicator, uh, MACD histogram, momentum has, has swung to positive territory and is actually expanding. So as the market is pushing higher, we'll be, that that's being confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. So the market is moving up and the rate of positive momentum is also increasing as well. So we'd be more confident that that, that, that this move is going to last. If we do continue to push on higher from here, the next big level to watch out for will be the psychologically uh, important number of 7,600. And if you do manage to drip lower, we could find some support coming to play in around the 7,500 or perhaps even as low as this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 7,311. Notice how in recent weeks and months that, 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 that blue line, the 50 moving average, has acted as support. And if it's acted as support in the past, it makes it all the more likely it will act as support again in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Take a quick look now at the Dow as well. As I mentioned, the Dow close above. 26,000 last night, the first time it closed above that level since early February, so I'll give you an indication of how bullish the market is. The market's pushing higher here, so it's in a steady upward trend, along with other US indices, so it's important that the averages can confirm each other. That's a component of Dow theory. Um, we can see here on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, there's a steady increase in positive momentum, so you can be more confident that the upward move is going to last. If we do push on higher from here, the next year to keep an eye for would be this region here. Uh, from late January, in around the 26,300 area, there thereabouts. Uh, any moves to the downside might find some support back in at 26,000, or else perhaps even as low as, say, 20, 25,800 or 820 in around this area here. Take a look now at the gold market, and the gold market had a, a fairly decent bounce back in recent weeks. Uh, this level here on gold, uh, this, this candle here from Thursday, the 16th of August, uh, gold fell to us to the, the, on that day fell to the low, its lowest level since early January 2017, and as you can see, gold had a fairly sizable bounce back since then. There's a steady increase in positive momentum, so it is it's possible that, that this upward move uh, is this uh, upward move in, in, we've seen in the last few weeks could continue. And if you manage to get a push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 1,226. Notice how it's we, it, that, that the 50-day moving average has acted as both support and resistance as way back in April uh, when this downward trend uh, first began. Uh, so there's a possibility that that, that that metric may come into uh, may, may come into play again. If we do manage to push on higher, but, but above um, 1,226, another keep an eye for as well could be um, 1,236. Uh, notice how it acted as both kind of support and resistance that area. Uh, 1236 uh, only uh, in June and July. If the market does turn over on itself again and does resume the wider downward trend that has been since April, keep an eye out for this area here in around the kind of 1285, 1283 area, or perhaps even as low as down as, uh, as sorry, I said 1285, I meant to say 1185, 11, 1183 area, or perhaps even as low as 1175. 
And then if you go south of 11.75, we could be looking at retesting the, the recent low of 11.60. Take a look now at the Brent oil market. So even though we've seen, broadly speaking, the market, the Brent, the oil market moving lower, we've seen, we've seen. If you take a look at the highs, their their lower highs and their lower lows. But we can say that, that the market found decent support from the trading moving average. This red line here. So there has been a small bit of time below the trading moving average, and the market has been pushing higher. We're at multi-week highs, we're at level we're at levels not seen since essentially early early July. If we do continue to push on higher here, we could be looking heading up towards heading up towards um, let's say um, in the, the, these recent highs here of just shy of eighty dollars a barrel. And if we go beyond those levels which were last seen in um, in early July, beyond that we'd be looking heading up back up towards eighty spot eighty nine. Any moves to the downside may find some support in around the 72 spot 50 area. And the big area of support to keep an eye out for will, this be, will be this red line here, the trending moving average, which comes into play at 70 spot 85. Because notice how we did find some decent support from it uh, only a few weeks ago. And if you, if you go south of the trending moving average, that could pave the way for further losses. Take a look now at WTI. It's a very similar situation whereby... The market hasn't been overly strong recently, but it has managed to find decent support from the 200 moving average. So once again, after hitting a multi-year high uh, in, in June, the market has been broadly been pushing lower. But in a in, in very kind of near-term um, time frame, the market has been edging higher. We're at levels not seen since early July. If we continue to push on higher here, and, we, and if a retake $70 a barrel, can I keep an eye out for will be the late so early early June high, early July high of 71 spot 69, and if you go beyond that, up towards 72. Any move to the downside uh, in WTI may find some support in around the 67 spot 50 area. It's an area of uh, in around the bro the in that area has been an area for, uh, for consolidation in recent weeks and months. Uh, but also the big area to keep an eye for will of course be the this red line here, the trending moving average, which comes into play at 65 spot 17. Notice that the market actually had a fairly decent support from it here. And if it had decent support in the past, it makes it all the more likely uh, it, will, it will provide decent support in the future. Turn your attention now to um, the currency pairs. So even though the euro has been in a downward trend against the US dollar since April, that's in a fairly decent bounce back in the euro, largely to do with the uh, US dollar weakness. And if you draw a line from a draw trend line from the highs of July down through the high so sorry from the highs of June down through the highs of July we can see that that that, that uh, trend line uh, actually a resistance then was respected on, on a few occasions uh, throughout July but we've actually now managed to actually break north of it and I think that comes into play in around in around the 116.60 mark and if you manage to hold above that area uh, it's likely we could be heading back up towards one spot 1850 there thereabouts that region but if we do manage to drift back below that we could be heading back down towards the 115 area on the euro versus the us dollar but it is worth noting that it is quite significant that the market actually managed to actually break above that, that uh, trend line resistance it's seeing as that uh, there are several occasions throughout july that actually managed to act as a uh, as a as a, as a barrier for the, the rising euro versus the us dollar and lastly, lastly but not least, finish up with the pound versus the US dollar. The pound has also been in a downward trend uh, versus the versus the US dollar since April. Since April, but uncertainty uh, around Brexit has really kept kept pressure on the British pound. That being said, sterling has been creeping creeping a bit higher, and we've seen a fairly steady increase in positive momentum. So in the near term, we could see the market creep higher. Uh, an area that I'll be uh, I'll be keeping an eye for will be the from the kind of from the mid. From the, from the low of mid July, which comes into play at one spot twenty nine fifty seven, between one spot twenty nine fifty seven and one thirty, we could see some resistance come into play around there. Um, if the market does manage to break north of that, we could be looking at heading up towards one spot thirty two fifty and area consolidation in around here. Uh, but if the market does fall back into the wider downward trend, we could be looking at heading back down, testing the recent lows uh, of one spot twenty six sixty one. And if we go south of that, we can really head back down to a one spot 2590. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.